Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. This is Tynetta from Sting Nail Co. And today I'm going to show you how I did these extra long encapsulated nails. Super simple and super easy, okay? So I'm starting off with my client's nails already prepped. The tips have been shaped and everything like that. So first thing first, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my money. This is a fake $100 bill that I got off Amazon, as you can see. It looks real, but it's not. So don't worry about us wasting money or... Uh, what y'all be talking about on TikTok? Uh, vandalizing or whatever y'all be talking about. Please don't do all that in the comments, okay? It's fake money. So, now what I'm going to do is find the parts that I think are interesting, cute, whatever like that. And just cut out some of those details. So, I got a couple of those hundreds. Um, I'm going to get this one right here with the little green circle in the middle. A couple of the words. Just little different interesting parts so that I can go ahead and encapsulate those. I like to do this part before I get started with acrylic application just so whenever I get to that step it's already ready and I don't have to stop what I'm doing to do all this detail work so yeah just cutting 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 I also kind of like this orange one just I thought it was a cool pop of color so I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate that as well so everything just doesn't look so monotone and black and white and green Okay, starting our application, I'm going to go in with our primer. This is Mega Bond Acid Free Primer from Sting Nail Co. And you can get all the products that I mentioned today at stingbeauty.com. So I'm going to go ahead and add one coat to all of her fingers. And then right before acrylic application on each finger, I'm going to add my second coat. I'm using the size 14 Kalinsky brush from stingbeauty.com as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply that first bead. Since these nails are pretty long, I like to go ahead and cover the entire tip first. And then I'll start to build up the apex area and then the cuticle area. So as you can see, I'm just going to cover that tip using the body of my brush to make sure everything is nice and smooth. Cleaning up the side wall so that the shape stays nice and clean. Now I'm going to go in with another bead for my apex. So I place that right in the area where the apex should be, which is where the nail tip meets the natural nail. And then I'm going to just blend that down and nail. You only want to blend the bottom. You want majority of the product to stay where you put it. Now I'm going to get a really small bead and place that right at the cuticle area right behind it and then gently push it back so that it doesn't flood into the skin immediately. So on her next two nails, these are going to be our encapsulated nails. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a clear base of acrylic right onto the nail bed. You don't have to bring this down onto the nail tip. This is just going to protect her natural nail and keep anything from lifting once we start putting all of our designs on. Then I'm going to do the same exact thing on the middle finger. And I do this anytime I do any sort of encapsulated, whether it's money, um, marble nails, glitter, flowers. I always do a clear base. Moving on to the next nail, I'm going to go ahead and apply a large bead to the area where the natural nail and the nail tip meet. Now I'm tipping her finger down towards the table so that that product is gradually flowing down. But while the product is flowing down, I'm using the tip of my brush and the sidewalls of my brush to guide that product into place where I want it. You don't want this to just flow freely, otherwise it can get out of hand very quickly. As you can see, I'm still using the body of my brush to smooth everything out. Now I'm going to get another medium sized bead and place it right above where I placed that first bead. I'm going to again use the tip of my brush to guide that product into place while that finger is tilted down. So the product is still flowing down the nail. Making sure that there's no product on her skin and that the shape is still nice and clean. And I'm just going to keep brushing until it's perfect or until it's too hard to move anymore. And now as you can see, I'm going to place that cuticle bead right behind the cuticle and gently use the tip of my brush to push that up and seal that area. You also want to make sure that there's no gaps on the side walls so that that area is nice and sealed as well. As you can see here, I'm adding another bead because I saw that there was a dip right there. So this is where I always say it doesn't matter how many beads you use, just use as many beads as you need to build up the structure of your nail. Moving on to the thumbnail, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. However, sometimes thumbnails can be a little bit finicky because it is larger. And this is one of the fingers that sometimes needs more beads than the rest. So again, you place that first bead right where the natural nail and the nail tip meet. Tilt the finger down so the product can flow down the nail and then gently using the tip of my brush to guide that product into place. I don't start swiping with the body of my brush, which is the flat part of the brush, until the product starts getting hard. If you immediately go in and start swiping with the body of the brush, 
it's going to wipe all that product off because it's just too soft it's not hard enough for that amount of pressure and you're going to end up wiping it off and putting it back on and this is how you get lumpy nails okay so that's just a tip so yeah next bead goes right above that one and then i'm just going to brush that down and blend that down the nail and trying to get that as smooth as i can before it gets hard i'm going to place the next bead at the cuticle area seal that cuticle area very gently with the tip of my brush and blend that down now as you can see i'm going to use the edge of my brush to clean any product from around the skin and you can kind of see that that nail is a little bit lumpy a little bit crazy looking so now i'm going to go ahead and add a couple more beads when I'm filling in gaps or dips, I like to use a bead that's a little bit harder. So I'll let it sit on my brush for a couple seconds before I place it, just so that when I place it, it stays exactly where I need it and it's not flowing all over the nail. It's always important to look at the nail from every angle so you can make sure that the nail has the structure that it's supposed to and that every gap is filled in. For the encapsulated nails, I'm going to apply one coat of our No Wipe Top Coat to the nail. And while it's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and arrange that money piece exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to use a handheld silicone LED light to just cure that in place. Now the only thing with this, I like to do one at a time with the money pieces just because her nails are so long. And um, I mean the light wouldn't fit over the entire nail anyway, so I just do one at a time. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on her other finger, just kind of positioning. And then this one was way too big, so I just cut it off because you don't really want them hanging off the nail if you can help it. You want to make sure everything is encapsulated inside of the nail. So as you can see, once I'm done placing these, I'm going to go ahead and cut off any of that excess paper that's hanging off before we do any encapsulation. And in here, I kind of was trying to fill in some of these uh, empty spaces with some of the other ones that I had. So I went ahead and just kind of did a little freestyle and just put those here and there. I prefer this method for encapsulation instead of using um, acrylic to adhere the product because acrylic can just get the nail so thick and make it bulky whereas with this it stays super super flat. You can also use nail glue for this instead of gel it's just personal preference. So here you can see I'm just trimming the edges of those money pieces that's hanging off the nail. Like I said you want to make sure that the entire piece is encapsulated. So it might go right up to the end of the tip but I'm going to cut it a little bit further just so that a little bit of the side of the tip is showing outside of the money if that makes sense if it's not completely covered it can lift the acrylic off the nail which is not a good thing so now what we're going to do is top coat over the money since this is fake money I don't want that monomer to like change the color or make any of that print smear so I just had her cure that and now we're going to go ahead and encapsulate so instead of using the same bead method that I used on the other fingers to encapsulate, the first thing I'm going to do is encapsulate everything in a very, very thin layer using a pretty runny bead of Crystal Clear. This is our clear acrylic from stingbeauty.com as well. The reason why I'm going in with this thin layer first is because I want to make sure that everything is actually encapsulated. Here you can see I'm going on the side so that the side of that piece of money is encapsulated. Also, using this thin layer is going to prevent any big air bubbles or any gaps where that money is glued onto the nail. So as you can see, I applied that large bead right up near the cuticle area and now I have her finger tilted down so that product will flow down the nail, especially since it is a little bit more runny than usual. And I'm just using my brush to make sure that it's spread over the entire nail and that everything is encapsulated from sidewall to sidewall. You still want to try and keep this nice and smooth so that when we go back and build up the structure, there's not a bunch of lumps and bumps to fill in. Now what I'm going to do is take a large bead of that crystal clear and build up the structure of the nail. So this is the same thing that we did on those nude nails. I'm using the tip of my brush to guide that product into place and now I'm using the body of my brush to smooth it out. And then I'm going to go ahead and reshape, make sure that shape is still nice and clean even though we're encapsulating. When I was first starting doing nails, encapsulated nails always were bulky thick and so hard to file so one thing that I've learned to do is make sure that I take my time and keep that shape nice and clean keep the encapsulated pieces as thin as possible if your encapsulated pieces are not thin what's going to happen is you're going to end up filing into them or filing them off 
So that's why it's always important to do that encapsulated layer super, super thin. Okay, so once we're done encapsulating everything, we're going to go ahead and go into filing. I'm using our 180 grit file from stingbeauty.com and I'm just going ahead and reshaping those nails. I'm using the 100 grit side of my file to go ahead and straighten out those side walls. And once I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to use the same 100 grit side to go ahead and smooth over the surface of the nail. When I'm doing long nails, I just like to hand file them just because it gives me a little bit more control over the overall shape of the nail. And it doesn't take as long for me as e-filing does. But in order to be able to hand file, you have to make sure that your nails are pretty, pretty close to finished application. Otherwise, you will be filing all day so if your nails are not you know there yet if you're still struggling with that application please don't be scared or feel like it's wrong to go in with your e-file find what works best for you and do that okay as long as your client isn't hurt and as long as those nails come out looking good I always say everybody has their own method this is just what I found works best for me so again I use the 100 side to go ahead and reshape the free edge and the side walls and get everything nice and clean and now I'm just going to go ahead and smooth over the top of the nail to make sure everything is nice and smooth and there's nothing too bulky including the, um, the side walls. You want everything to be nice and thin and even on both sides. You don't want one side to be more thick or more raised than another side. I always recommend to file and then stop and check just to make sure that the file is doing what you want it to do. If you notice that it's not, go ahead and readjust how you're holding your file or how your client is holding their finger so you can get the best results and so you don't mess up your shape. Once I'm done shaping the free edge, I'm going to go ahead and seal those cuticles. This is one of my favorite parts. It just makes those nails look so nice and clean. I'm using a tapered fine carbide drill bit to go over the surface of the nail and as you can see I'm not just staying at the cuticle area if the free edge is a little bit too bulky I will go over that at this point so like I said right around the cuticle you want to go nice and slow so that you don't touch their skin and you want to make sure that you're sitting up so you can see what you're doing have your lighting right above the hand because this is a time that you can possibly cut your client so yeah if you're not comfortable using these sharp drill bits that's okay because I just got comfortable um, within the past couple years and I've been doing nails for 10 years so there's always a safety bit that you can use where it's not sharp on the edge it's a little bit rounded and that way you won't be at risk of cutting your clients okay so this nail was a little bit more bulky than the ring finger. So what I'm going to do is go over the surface of this nail a little bit more just to debulk some of that acrylic. And as you can see, I'm just going around and around until I'm satisfied with the cuticle area. There's no set number of times that you should go around. There's no set number of ways or anything like that. I'm just going to keep going until it looks nice and clean and is something that I'm happy with sending my client home with. There are some rules to nails that do not change, such as when you're prepping a nail, it has to be completely matte, right? But you don't have to be so strict with everything else. Like with the methods that you get things done, you don't have to count 10 strokes every single finger. Like it's not that deep. Just make sure that everything looks how it's supposed to look and that your client's nails are not going to be lifting or popping off. Now I'm going to be using a buffer to go ahead and smooth out the entire surface of the nail, especially on those clear nails. If you notice that your clear acrylic never gets clear, it might be because you're not buffing them. So as you can see on the clear nails, I'm going to go a little bit more because what this is doing is removing any scratches and surface imperfections that are causing cloudiness on that nail, okay? So when you're smoothing out all those scratches and smoothing out that clear acrylic, that's going to give you a much more clear look. So try that on your clear nails and see if that improves the cloudiness. If not, you might need to try Crystal Clear from Steam Nail Co. Okay. I have my client wash her hands and now I'm going to go ahead and top coat everything using our No Wipe Gel Top Coat. You want to use nice light strokes you don't want to press too hard because that's going to put dents in your top coat the purpose of this top coat is to seal in the entire nail while leaving a nice smooth surface so as you can see i'm going over it more than once i'm going to keep brushing and keep brushing very lightly until i get the look that i'm going for which is a nice smooth surface okay
You also want to make sure that there's no dust from earlier in the service or any lint, maybe from your client's clothes stuck in the top coat because that can mess up that finish as well. Last but not least, I'm just looking at the corners of the nails to make sure no top coat went off the side. Then I'm going to cure that for 60 seconds. So here's the finished product. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you are able to get some tips to help with your acrylic application and encapsulation. If you want to learn the in-depth process of doing acrylic nails, I have an online class linked below and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.